Hello! Welcome to episode three of the Lindsay B. Crafts podcast. My name is Lindsay and I'm coming to you from a cloudy, about 50-ish degree day in Wells, Maine. Um, so this is the light we're working with today. Unfortunately, it's not going to get any better than this, but it's not too shabby if I say so myself. Um, how have you been? I've been okay. Um, I had a really long vacation recently, uh, so this podcast is up a little bit later than I intended. Um, I did record at one point last week, but I was a little bit all over the place, and it's not really something that I wanted to put up, so I decided to just wait until I kind of had my thoughts together a little bit more so that I could put out something that wasn't terrible to watch. Um, so what have I been up to? Um, got a new mug. So uh, a local-ish potter, local to Maine anyway, makes these for coffee on the porch in Camden, Maine. Um, they usually only do limited batches and I was fortunate enough to snag one in their last little update. Um, it's like sunset with some pine trees. It's beautiful. It's got a little chickadee on the mug. I think that's their logo. And then the handle has like a nice thumbprint. I am drinking some coffee with pumpkin spice creamer in it. It's very lovely. It's getting cold, but that's okay. Um, what else? Uh, I took a trip to New York State. So my husband and I, Eric, uh, drove about four and a half hours-ish from Maine to New York State to attend both the Wool and Folk and New York Sheep and Wool Festivals um, on Friday and Saturday of, what was it, last week? Week before last? I don't even know. Where has time gone? It's practically almost November. Um, so I don't have too much to say about that. Um, I'm an introvert and both festivals were very crowded, so... Uh, it was a little bit hard to enjoy the magic as much as I had hoped, but it definitely was an experience and I'll elaborate a little bit more, I think, as we go on. But first, let's get into our usual segments. So I don't have any finished objects really. Uh, I did decide to finish my, well I finally blocked, I should say my sweater hug sweater by Skin Deer Knits that I had knit in Nightshades by Harrisville Designs. I actually wore it all day at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. We got there early enough in the day that it was still a good temperature for sweaters, um, but by the time we left it was pushing like 70 degrees and it was pretty toasty. So I'll pop up a picture of me wearing it, but I don't have any official finished object pictures and I don't have it with me right now. Um, I did decide to just let the cuff stay as it was. So if you've been following the saga of the mismatched um, knitted cuffs, um, I ended up just weaving in the end and rolling with it. So it didn't bother me in the end as much as I thought that it would. And honestly, it didn't really feel worth the effort of unraveling it when, you know, it functions just fine as it is. Um, but, I do have a half finished object. So as promised, I have one completed snuggle sock. Look at that. This thing is thick with two C's. Um, so this is the snuggle socks by Max and Sear, also known as Max the Knitter. Um, it is basically a double layered sock. So we have this lovely mosaic pattern in Juicy DK by the farmer, Farmer's Daughter Fiber. Um, I don't remember the names of the colors that I chose. I believe the light green is olive oil and the darker one is something to do with pine. Um, and then gray wolf, I think, for gray wolf or white wolf or something for the Odang Surrey Alpaca Surrey Silk Alpaca. It is so soft. I have decided that I definitely love this more than mohair. Um, it is just so thick and velvety um, and it's like halo-y but it's not as like hairy as mohair tends to be. I feel like a lot of mohairs I've worked with have like really long hairs on it. Um, 
and that's not necessarily an aesthetic that I lean towards. So what we do is we just shove this little Surrey part right back in. And we kind of push out the heel to get it settled in there. And there we have it. It's lined, it's warm, it's cozy, it's squishy. Um, my husband tried it on and he absolutely loved it. So now I just need to make the second one. What I will say though, is that it is a surprisingly, like it is a surprising amount of knitting. So at least in my mind, when someone says DK sock, I'm like, oh, that'll knit up fast because thicker yarn, it won't take as long as fingering weight. Yes, but, or yes and, um, doing a mosaic pattern definitely slowed me down a little bit. And then I kind of felt like the Surrey part, so it's two strands of Surrey held together, not just one, uh, but it's supposed to make, I think, roughly a DK fabric, and that just felt like it took forever. <laughs> and I don't know how much of that was me just being impatient to have it done, um, and how much it was just at a slightly like different gauge, sort of, but it's done. <laughs> anyway, now I just have to make the second, so... Uh, I need to cast that on soonish because I did promise to have these finished by my husband's birthday, which is at the end of November. So I'm coming up on only having a few more weeks left. So got to get on that. Um, so that's my half finished object. What else have I been working on? So the rest is just going to be mostly whips. Um, a lot of things that you've seen before, a couple of things that are new-ish. Um, so first, let me pull out my breathing space sweater. Um, I have actually made a fair bit of project, progress on this since you last saw it, I think. I have finished all the striping of the body. I'm done with the short rows. Um, and now I am just at the very bottom where I need to knit to a certain amount of inches before I start the ribbing. Um, so the measurement is taken from the right side, which is the shorter of the two sides. And I feel as though this body is infinite. <laughs> like, you know how it is with fingering weight yarn. Like it makes a lovely fabric. It's a beautiful drape, but damn, knitting the body just takes forever. <laughs> Like I'm at the point where normally I'd just be rushing to try to finish it. But not only that, there were some like increases for the body here because it like it's tighter fitting up top with like zero ease on the bust. But then from like the rib cage down, it kind of flares out and sort of like a tunicky dressy type style. So there were definitely some stitches added. Um, and so the rounds are fairly long. So I never really feel like I can just zoom around and around because one round takes me probably like 10 minutes to complete. So it's just, it's a lot. Um, I keep trying to remind myself though to stay patient because it's the times when I try to zoom through where I either injure myself or the other alternative, I stop short and then I hate the length and never want to wear it. So sorry, the Blue Jays are really upset out there for some reason. Um, I think the turkeys might be here too because one of my cats is at the window making noises and those are typically her turkey noises. So, um, but I digress. Um, yeah, so I'm knitting the body forever, but I'm almost done. I really only have like three and a half more inches to go before I do the ribbing and then I can move on to the sleeves. I've actually even contemplated maybe finding, um, another same size needle. I think I'm knitting this on US 5, 3.75 millimeter. So I'm sure I could drum up another like five millimeter needle in my stash and just start the sleeves anyway, even though the body's not done, just to kind of be able to alternate and have something a little bit different. So maybe I'll do that or maybe I won't. I'm kind of a completist. I like to do all the parts from beginning to end in order. Um, it's weird. Anyway, Breathing Space by Vera Relamaki. Um, again, this darker part is Cormorant in um, 75, 25 Superwash Merino by Megs & Co. And then these stripes are Moon, 
Moon Eater. I always get confused because Dragon Horde Yarn has Moon Eater and I think Bull and Vine has Moon Cusser. Um, but this is Moon Eater, I'm pretty sure, by Dragon Horde Yarns. Also on their 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Base. Um, so yeah, that's my breathing space. Um, hopefully, by the time next podcast rolls around, I will have the body finished. I'm not going to say sleeves because I feel like that's overshooting myself a little bit, but I think definitely body is manageable. All right, what next? Maybe a little coffee break. Ah, sorry if I sound a little nasally. I do feel like my sinuses are draining. The weather's been kind of weird here. Um... It's been kind of shifting between like 70 and like mid 50 degrees like from a day-to-day -day basis so um welcome to autumn in maine am i right uh, all right so the next flip i'll show you is a new cast on um so i had a lot of crafting time during my vacation which was amazing um but as it goes i got a little bit kind of restless and just wanted something different um, and sometimes I feel like doing a different motion than knitting so I decided to cast on a crochet cowl. Um, this is the Juniper Cowl by Toni Lipsy. Um, if you have never heard of her she does a lot of crochet and Tunisian crochet patterns. Um, she probably has the best crochet patterns that I've seen. Um, for the most part what is going on down here is something unraveling no um anyway <laughs> sorry so this is a really good scrap buster uh i believe it's designed to use 10 mini skeins um so you just kind of knit or not knit but crochet until one color is gone and then start with the next one and you're just in the round going in a spiral it's a very like easy and soothing knit. This is all in puff stitch. So you can see it's one of those nice crochet cluster stitches that are kind of squishy. And I really can't wait till I finish this because, excuse me, I feel as though it's gonna be so nice to wear. Um, it does have some increases. So the top will be more narrow than the bottom. So that will give it a nice flow and drape around like the collar area. So that will be fun. Um, I'll try to tell you the colors if I can remember what they are. Uh, this top one is Geode, and this is a singles base by Crooked Kitchen Yarn. Um, I used this in my Bix Bite shawl, shawl by Vera Valmecki, which I haven't shown here, but I think at some point I'll go through all of my past shawls with you, uh, just for funsies. This dark, like, plum black purple here that is from the it's a unified gradient by fiber optics yarn i believe it's their like merino cashmere fingering base uh, i don't remember what the fade's called it's something to brambleberry so all of her fades usually say for example like gold to damson is one fade. Um, I don't remember what the starting color was, but it's it's basically a, a fade of purples. Um, I, it's left over from, I made the architecture texture scarf for my husband with two skeins of it. Um, I'll show that another time as well. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. And then this bottom part here, I don't know the color name, but it is by, it's a mini that I purchased from Deep Dyed Yarns. Um, her sparkle game is for real. Like, look at that. That is coming through so much better than any other sparkle yarn that I've shown on camera before. Um, and it's just like emerald greens and brighter greens and some like burgundy and shades of purple. And I really love how the pooling was. It's like almost in little diagonals. Um, I like it a lot. Not really sure what color I'm going to go next, but I've just been using my giant bag of scraps and minis to kind of have fun with color and just have a choose your own color adventure. So that is the Juniper Cowl by Tony Lipsy. 
Um, okay, I think, no, I have, I have one more knitting, crocheting related whips. And then the others are different crafts. So, um, as I said, I kind of got a little bit bored and I decided to start a new shawl. It's new in that it's with different yarn, but I have knit this pattern before. This is called In the Library with a Candlestick by Barbara Benson. I believe it was originally a mystery and knit along. So each page of the pattern is like a different clue. Um, so it's broken down into sections, which is nice because it kind of makes the knitting a little more manageable. You just give yourself a little chunk at a time. Um, so yeah, it's a crescent shaped shawl. Um, we start with a little bit of like a textured garter stitch. So we have garter ridges alternating with like almost like a rib type thing. Um, and then we go into this like mesh stitch here, back into garter, um, textured garter. And now I'm on a lace, a li bleh, I can't talk today. <laughs> Everything's coming out with like SHs and I don't know why. <laughs> Um, so I'm about, I'm two rows into like a lace section, so you can't really see much of it, but, um, so for this, I am using Magpie Fibers, the little mystery skein kit that I purchased a while back. Um, this is their Nest Worsted Base. I believe it's 100% Corydale yarn. Um, and these are both just one of a kind colors. So one's kind of a whiny burgundy type color, purpley reddish. Um, and this is like a cream with kind of faded notes of this throughout. So kind of that mauve going through there, like a dusty rosy pink. Um, they really, I think they really complement each other well. Um, I am, so the pattern is originally for DK weight. This is worsted. Um, I believe I went up a needle size or two. I'm knitting this right now on a US 10s to get this fabric. Um, my goal with this is to use up as much yarn as possible because I have another skein of each of these. Um, and I'm also still on the quest to create a schlanket. So um, if you've watched my previous episodes, I believe I touched on the fact that um, when I first started making shawls, I didn't really pay attention to my gauge. So everything pretty much came out smaller than it should have because as I realized once I started actually checking things out, uh, I'm a tight knitter. So typically for any pattern out there, I go up at least a needle size um, to get the suggested gauge. So I believe I may be close to gauge for this. Um, from what I measured so far, I actually, yeah, now that I remember, I started this tail part on a smaller needle. I think I did a US 9. And then I saw that it was still coming out like a little tight. And then I went up to a 10. And I actually really like this fabric. Um, so it's nice and kind of drapey. Um, you can really see like the, the garter is not all scrunched up like it is on my other one. Like I said, I've knit this before and we'll go through that another time. Um, and I'm excited to see how the lace comes out because this, I think, will be a really good fabric for lace and that will kind of shine on its own even pre-blocking. So, um, I don't mind the colors terribly. I'm not entirely sure if I love them. So, if the finished object is not something I see myself wearing, it might be a gift. So, that is my library, in the library with a candlestick. Knit, mystery Knit Along by Barbara Benson. Although it was years ago, so it's not a mystery anymore. Okay. What is next? Okay, so I have next a cross stitch and some spinning to share with you. Um, so like I said, lots of crafting time on my vacation from work. It was great because I felt like I really had the freedom to explore everything that I like doing. Um, and not just feeling as though I'm rushed to do as much in the limited free time that I have. So let me show you 
So this cross stitch is not a kit. Um, I actually purchased the pattern on Etsy. Um, who is it by? I, it's by Delorei Crafts or Delorei, something like that. I'm pretty sure it's just Delorei. I always want to add the extra syllable. Um, but essentially you could give this person like a phrase that you wanted and then choose from different like flower photos and they will put it all together for you. So I purchased this in 2020 um, during the pandemic and at the time I was working more of an office job. So I had an office space and I thought it would be really funny to put this on the wall. Just cover your face holes and then the bottom is just going to be all these like lovely little flowers. So it was supposed to be kind of one of those subversive cross stitches where you put kind of a snarky saying with like nice happy flowers and things underneath it. Um, I actually didn't work on it for like two years because just recently is when I started it. So about two or three weeks ago, before my vacation officially started, um, I kind of abandoned all of my knitting and just started working on this because I felt like it, I guess. So when I started, there were just like a couple stitches. There wasn't even a full letter. Um, and I did all of this and then started the flowers and then I haven't really been working on it since. Um, this is a 16 count Ada, if that matters to you or it means anything to you. I am not a cross stitch expert by any means. Um, this is actually the first pattern that I've ever used that I didn't like purchase it with a kit. In the past, I've just done the ones that they have at Michael's and things like that when the mood struck me, but um, I got like a hoop and the embroidery thread, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and needles and all that on a cross stitch supply, supply company, something like that. I'm sorry. I think I just swallowed like some dust or cat hair. <laughs> all right. Um, so the great thing about the person who did this pattern is they took all the colors that were in the design and they gave you a key for which colors would correspond to which DMC um, embroidery thought floss. So that was really nice. So all I had to do was just put in those numbers on the cross stitch supply web cut site and uh, I've essentially made a kit for myself. Um, so yeah. I'm not sure what I'll do with this one and if I ever finish it, I might just put it in sort of a nice little. All right, so fun behind the scenes. My phone keeps cutting me off, telling me that I don't have enough storage to record video. Um, so I just basically talk to myself for a good 10 minutes before realizing that my phone had stopped recording. So that's fun and exciting. Um, so I believe I left off talking about my cross stitch, which I have now put away. Um, but essentially once I finish this, if and when, it will just go in a hoop, I'll tack down the edges and it'll just be a little decoration. Um, next, I have some spinning to show. So I have been spinning my 2021 Inglenook Fibers countdown calendar that I purchased last year, but ripped open every package, looked at the fiber and then just left alone for any on. But I decided to take it out over vacation um, and I've actually spun up through day three. Um, so I enjoy spinning on a drop spindle. I do have a wheel as well, but I feel that this is more accessible. So um, the spindles by 3G Woodworks, the handle or rod or dowel, whatever here is some sort of wood. I'm not sure what kind, it's very light. It almost feels hollow. Um, it reminds me of the quill of a bird feather. Um, if you look at the point, it almost looks like it could have a hole in it. Does that make your eyes feel weird? It makes mine feel weird. Anyway, uh, and then the top is resin with a little bit of sparkle and some pine cone inside. Um, I really am a sucker for resin cast nature. So naturally, I had to have this one. Naturally, get it, pun not intended. Um, so I'll show you day one. These are just single spun. It's got some Stellina, some 
some sort of wool. I think I said it was like 30% bond fleece. I'm not entirely sure what that is. There's also silk noil. It's got some nips. I believe there's also bamboo in there. So this is like a nice um, spring yellowy green color. Um, and then we have day two, which is this beautiful like sky periwinkle blue. Um, again with the nips, a little Stellina. Um, so my goal with these is I'm going to spin up all of the days and then I'm going to figure out which ones I want to see together. Um, and then I'm going to two ply like a couple different colors together and get a little barber pole effect. Um, so I think that'll be fun. Looking forward to that. Um, and then this is day three, if I didn't mention that. So this one's like a little bit darker than day two, more on the purple side. And then it's got almost these like neon streaks running through it. Sorry, it'd be helpful if I actually like got it to focus. Yeah, that's probably as good as it's gonna get until I get like a real camera to record on, which I might have to do if my phone's gonna tell me that it doesn't have time for me. So thanks a lot, Apple. Um, anyway, this is what the fiber that I'm spinning looks like. This is what they call their stickle bot. So it's just a small piece of like a huge bot. Um, has all the fun stuff running through it. Um, see those neon streaks I was talking about. I've never really spun anything so textured before and honestly, I'm really enjoying it. Um, so that is my spinning. Um, that's all my whips. Um, everything that I have left is sashquisitions. So, sorry, I'm trying to talk a little bit faster just in case the phone decides to cut me off again because I don't want to have to keep like deleting things and then coming back and recording in pieces because that's annoying for everyone. So, let's talk about Woolen Folk. It was at the Hutton Brickyard um, in Kingston, New York, which is a venue that's like right on the Hudson River. It was very scenic. It was a nice day. You could see like water, seagulls, bridges in the background. Um, definitely a little bit different than I'm used to seeing. We have a lot of scenic stuff here in Maine, but most of it's like rocky coastline, ocean, things like that. Uh, I'm not really used to having like that river view, so that was really cool. Um, so like I said earlier, I don't really have a lot to say about the festivals. They were pretty overwhelming for me. There were a lot of people um, I knew they were going to be crowded and busy, but it was a lot, a little tighter than I expected. Um, I did get to see a live podcast with the grocery girls, Gigi Maida and Adela from Lola Bean Yarn Co. Um, I will say that both days there were moments where I just kind of casually walked by <laughs> these people. Um, like, this is just life, just going to walk by these famous, like, knitting influencers and dyers and whatever and... I'm not really the type of person that will say hi or like start a conversation because I suck at small talk and it's like if I don't know you what am I gonna say? Did get to meet Christine Parker Co. in the flesh though at um, Woolen Folk so that was really cool. Um, she was coming out of her cabin and I was taking a people break with my husband um, kind of away from all the hubbub and I stopped her and said hi and we actually had a mini conversation and it was really cool and hopefully not too super awkward. Um, but yeah, let me run you through what I purchased there. So I got five skeins of Little Fox yarn. This is their True Wash DK, which is 100% organic burrito treated. Um, and I believe... It says, our true wash yarns are treated with a GOX certified organic compound to create washability. So from what I understand, this is not a super wash yarn, but it is treated to make it washable. So that's cool. This colorway is called Pennies from Heaven. So it's this nice like teal blue green color um, with a little bit of like rust speckling here and there. Um, it's coming a little more yellowy on the screen, but like... You can see here it's almost like a sea green I don't know I love it a lot this is definitely in my color palette that I love um, so my plan for this is to make the Carson pullover by Pip and Pin um, I'm not sure if it's just Megan no Decker but she's part of Pip and Pin so it's one or the other I'll pop a picture of that up in here and then 
I went to Home Row Fiber um, and they were selling mugs, shirts, and bags. Uh, I don't have the mug or the shirt that we purchased next to me, but I did get this really cool bag here. It's a nice um, drawstring, probably enough for like socks or a small shawl. Um, I actually fit all five skeins of my pennies from heaven in here, so if that tells you anything, that's how many skeins of yarn I can hold. Um, and then it's got all these little silhouettes of like familiars and animals. Um, I actually chatted a little bit with, I believe her name is Rochelle from Homer Fiber. Um, sorry, I have to shut a little bit. My leg is going numb. Um, and she let me know that she designs her fabrics and the silhouettes of the cats and the dogs are actually outlines of her actual pets. And I just thought that was really special and cool. Um, so yeah, Home Row Fiber Co. There you have it. Um, I should have a picture of the mug though, which I'll pop right up here. Um, and the shirt, well, maybe I'll wear it in the next episode so y'all can see it. It's a great color. Um, it's like, it's this color on the top here. I love it. Okay. So this brings me to New York Sheep and Wool. Um, so we got there around like 9.15, 9.30 in the morning. Shortly after it started, the crowd wasn't too, too bad at that point. It was at least like manageable if you took a deep breath and just tried to not think about the fact there were so many people in your space and like touching you as you walked by. <laughs> so um, we took a look at the animals. Uh, it was really fun to see all the llamas and the goats and the different breeds of sheep um, and be able to kind of really look at their different types of fleece and everything. Um, I liked that a lot. Um, there were so many really cool vendors there. Um, the only downside was that there were just so many people. It's like, how do you really stop and look at anything? Um, not to mention, like, if you want to buy something, how do you, like, get a good enough look to decide? Um, so, but I made a pit stop in, at the Into the World booth. Um, I have some fiber by them that I've purchased online but I've never seen their yarn in person. So that was really cool to be able to see that. I got two skeins each of these. So this is a 75-25 Superwash Merino. They call this their Pakoku Sock. Um, this one is called Hijinx. Ooh, look at that. You can really see the lighting's weird, but you can see like the red streaks and the blue and like, like the, the russet um, on top of like this like tealy purple navy. There are just, there are so many colors in this and it doesn't quite come across on a screen. Um, but in person it is amazing. Um, and then we have cardamom. So this is like an olivey gray. Um, and I thought these two would look nice together. I plan to make a Baroque shawl by Vera Valamaki which was in one of the recent copies of Interpretations, the little periodical that she does with Hohi Locatelli. So um, I believe that she'll have some brioche section, sections. So I thought this would look pretty cool together. Um, kind of dark and moody, just like me. <laughs> um, oh, and I almost forgot one more thing that was purchased for me by my dear husband at the Wool Info Festival. We made a stop at the One Geek to Craft the Mall booth and this person makes a lot of stitch markers and things that are like nerdy themed. Um, Eric really likes D&D &D and is into Critical Role. Um, if you've never heard of that, it's a podcast that is basically a recording of a bunch of voice actors playing Dungeons and Dragons. So, um, I have the Caleb stitch markers. So Caleb, I believe is a wizard. Hopefully I got that right. Um, so we have the cat because he has a cat familiar named Frumpkin that can like come in and out of the fey realm at will. And then we have some like arcane tomes or spell books and then just some nice little beads here. Um, so let's see, can we focus? No, it's fine. Um, and then this other one I picked out because I liked the tree and 
This is Kiki, I believe, from one of the previous campaigns. It's called the Mighty Nine is what I'm told. Did I get that right, Eric? <laughs> um, so we have a dice or a die. We have some antlers because she's some sort of like earth druid type thing and I think she can shape shift or something. Then we have a tree and the green beads. Sorry if the shaking is making you seasick. Um, so yeah, that's all my stuff. Those are my stash acquisitions. Uh, and that brings us to the end of this episode. Um, hopefully I'll get this out to you by the next day, whenever the next day is. Um, and yeah, now I'm just babbling and rambling. So if you got this far and you listened all the way through, thank you so much. Um, and I hope to see you next time. Happy knitting.